Hello and welcome back to Let's Play Wrath of the Righteous with me, Bregaton. Let's head to the Citadel's main floor. And possibly wrap up the siege. The Tower Summit. I'll take care of it. My will is resolute. Let me help. Together, never wrong. I had to look at my uh, spells. I've seen all these spells before. Grab a few of those, I guess. All right, here's our angel specific spells. They start at level three. So level two, we can do aid and... Not worry about fear effects. Paladins are immune to fear. Fear and death effects though. That might be worth it. So I like Archon Zora, but let's look at our new spell. So Grand Repose. Sorry, Grant Repose. You make a touch attack against any undead creature. If it fails a will saving throw, it is immediately destroyed. If the target succeeds, it is dealt 2d6 damage plus 1 damage per 2 caster levels. Doesn't sound like a Mythic Path spell, but it could be. A Shield from Demon Kind. For 1 minute per caster level, Anytime the target is hit by a demon, the demon is dealt 1d6 points of damage plus 1 damage per 2 caster levels. Additionally, the target gains deflection bonus to armor class equal to 2 plus 1 per 6 caster levels. In Ward Against Disease, the target gains immunity to diseases for 10 minutes per caster level. Okay. <laughs> Doesn't seem that great. I will grab this. It's thematic. Anything new? That can be a pretty tough fight if you're not prepared for it. I overbuffed for it. We're gonna rest again before the final boss fight for Act 2. We got Headcracker. Whenever the wielder of this plus two mithril light mate mate mace, sorry, not mate. <laughs> Lands a first hit against a new target with it. The enemy has to pass a fortitude saving throw DC 15 or become stunned for 1d3 rounds. 
I'm gone. I'm oh, sorry to go down. Another floor. So where's the door at? There it is. We are the light. They are the darkness. Calm it down, Bismuth. I was saying there's another perception check in that room, but there's not. Get back here and take care of these guys. Still got it. I'll remove this obstacle. melee weapon and ran into my party instead of fighting Ulbrich. go. And land's got it under control. Maybe. I didn't think the uh, Babao had that much health.
Yeah, something's gotta be bugged out. He should not still be alive. So we're out of combat over here. We'll just do this and rest up. I'm gone. I uh, don't need skill checks where we're going. Wouldn't mind having bonus to saving throw. So we'll do the onion soup here. And it's Nenny's favorite dish, so she'll get us uh, a bonus effect from having it. Here's an interesting fact. The second arms of Glabrezus grow in nipples grow in humans. And human nipples evolve into an extra pair of limbs over time. Sorry, I'm not drunk enough for this conversation. <laughs> so I would like to go in here and... Ready to move out? Uh, so our personal favorite bonus, so normally it's a plus one cooking bonus and all saving throws for a day. Uh, she gets a plus four cooking bonus to all skill checks, which is actually really good on her since she covers four of our uh, skill checks, or can cover four of our skill checks. I'm always open to I'd like to go here and read the description without fighting. Uh, this room looks a little cleaner than the rest of the fortress. It's probably the warden's bedroom. We should move. I shouldn't do divine favor yet. Uh, fear and death effects. The paladins are immune to fear, but the death effect bonus would be nice. The world has suffered enough. A bright future awaits The goddess us. protects us. Yes, I need five of these, not four. My curses don't come up very often, so I swap that out for one of these. Search for the beauty with your heart, not your eyes. Ona Adayana. Ona Adayana. Ona Adayana. Ona Adayana. Rajani Savidur. Rajani Savidur. Rajani Savidur. Rajani Savidur. I will lend you my aid. Inimosi Travisi. Ona Adayana. I'm all ears. I 
I need an extra casting of Blur, too. Well, I have six, I need seven. Skills are absolute. You are my favorite aid. I'm always ready. I'll take care of it. Anything new? Meditate on your mistakes. My will I is make resolute. You feel the world Rely has suffered enough. Me. Try and get this. You know what? Let's not do that yet. You require my unbiased opinion? We get haste out. I was walking. If I'd stand like right here, the goddess should be able to get this off. Search for the beauty with your heart, not your eyes. <laughs> No reason to pause. I am never wrong. I'm always open to ideas. There should be nothing else that I need. All right, here we go. Let's run, sweetie. Let's go. Why are you so slow? They're almost here. I'm not going anywhere. The dwarf's cracked voice sounds like rasping, rusty metal. Don't you feel it? He's got that damn rag with him! I can't teleport! He's going to kill us! If he kills us, then so be it. But this is my city, and I will fight for it to the end. And you, my love, you will be with me to the end. Stalin grasps the chin of the demoness. Sinking his nails into her tender skin, and pulls her face toward his, kissing her lips quickly before pushing her away. Hello, Minago. Greetings, Mr. Misery Guts. It's us again. You've escaped justice for too long, Staunton Vane. But today, you'll pay for your crimes. Of course. I regret nothing. And I'm ready to pay my dues. What about you? Are you ready to pay for everything you've done in the name of your pathetic queen? I mean, I just started, but sure. Tell me, Staunton, why? Why do you fight on the side of the demons? You have the audacity to ask me that? I fight on this side because the other side didn't give me a chance. Yes, I made a terrible mistake and Dresden fell to the demons. The queen should have had me hanged. I deserved it. But she found a far worse punishment for me. False mercy. When she spared me that day, she said she wanted to give me a chance to make amends. <laughs> and I believed her. For 70 years, I've crawled on my knees, shedding my blood for Mendev, only been spat in the face for it. For 70 years! I watched generations of crusaders grow old and die, never once changing their tune about Staunton the traitor. What else could I give for my mistake? What more punishment could I suffer? How, oh, how could I ever deserve forgiveness? And one day, I realized there's nothing I can do. The Queen had doomed me to a lifetime of humiliation. And when I grew desperate, I only had two choices. To become my own executioner and carry out the sentence she rescinded that day. Or go over to the other side. Put yourself in my place. Imagine yourself in that position. What would you choose? Then we just ignore everything he said and talk to Minago. Uh, aren't you getting tired of fleeing from me, Minago? 
You have no idea how tired I am of you, mortal. But never mind. Today, we will finally be done with you. Right, Staunton? Right, sweetie? <laughs> the demon's laughter is shrill and unnatural. <laughs> you know, I once heard a peasant trying to convince his sick sheep to overcome her constipation and share her impacted torrent of crap with the rest of the world. The sheep was obviously very dear to the peasant, and he cooed and called her lambkin and darling as he described the process in graphic detail, apparently to inspire the beast. Well, listening to that wasn't half as stomach-churning as listening to your filthy demon mouth spewing honeys and sweeties all over the place. Ugh. Monago, what's that on your face? That's not your concern, mortal! The demon hisses angrily. The master has punished her cruelly for her failure in Canabras. <laughs> as you can see, the leaders of the demons are as patient with their slaves as the Crusaders are with their commanders. A crooked smirk crosses the dwarf's face. Sweetie, why are you telling him this? What does it matter? What? Quiet. Staunton's voice holds no emotion whatsoever, except perhaps weariness. The word that fell from his lips barely echoes, but nonetheless, the demon immediately falls silent. As you have quite a gathering of cowards and traitors here, even Nura showed up, who you can see right there. You think I'd miss the chance to see Staunton wipe that grin off your smug face? I think you overestimate his abilities. For years, you self-appointed champions of good have treated us like dirt beneath your feet. If the demons will help us get our revenge, then we're with the demons. It's time to decide the fate of Dresden. Right. No point in wasting time talking. To arms! Staunton, darling. Stop whining! Didn't you swear your eternal love to me? Promised we'd rule Dresden together? Now shut your lying mouth and fight! Whatever end fate has in store for me, you will share it! No glory without risk! Oh, land's not mounted. Whoopsies. You've crossed the wrong mark. That's probably okay. You stubborn ass! You want to die for a heap of rocks? Go ahead. I'm not staying here. There's panic on Monago's blood splashed face. Her lips are trembling. No, my dear. You are. You will either fight to the bitter end, or I'll break your delicate little neck myself with these very hands. <laughs> Are you threatening me, my mortal toy? Me? And with what? With the power I gave you? You ungrateful beast! The demon's mouth, trembling with fear, opens wide in a hysterical grin like a wound on her face. Give me back what's mine! Take him, he's yours! And Dresden too! 
I don't care about this fortress or this half-wit. Minaga stretches out her hand. Her crimson spark flies out of Staunton's eyes and plants itself in her palm. Staunton freezes stunned. He's silently moving his lips, which have turned gray in a flash, like a fish out of water. The demon turns to you. Oh, I grow so tired of you mortals. Your humdrum little passions. Your constant squabbling. Your incessant accusations and excuses. You treat each other like dirt. Push weaklings like these two into our arms. And then you have the audacity to accuse us. Come on, punish your traitors. I've seen this show countless times. The demon points at Staunton and Nura. This is what happens to those who believe the demon's promises. <laughs> Amazing, isn't it? Everyone knows all about us, and yet they still trust us. Silly, silly mortals. Take your filthy rag! Take your befouled ruins! You can make soup out of this moron for all I care. I've had enough war. We Lily too were created for tenderness and love. Stay away from me with your swords and shields. So this is to be my fate. I've been betrayed by people and demons alike. Now my life really is worth nothing. But that doesn't mean you won't pay for it dearly. Come on, you scumbag. Kill me if you can. I don't care anymore! He looks at you, and the sorrow in his eyes gives way to hatred. Enough of this insanity. But end your weapons, Staunton. Come back to us. You've been treated unfairly, but you still make things right. <laughs> you really do believe that, don't you? You really think that you can still change something? Somehow bring a cursed soul back to the light? The dwarf chuckles sadly, and without ire. I wish I could believe like you do. Hope like you. But I know too well. There is no hope. I've been dead for a long time. As a matter of fact, the torment of the last few years, I might as well have spent them in the abyss. The only thing you can do for me has finished me off. He shakes his head. Let's get this over with. Two arms. I refuse to accept their statement. This will hurt! I'm coming, Lady Death. Forgive me for being 70 years late for our date. There's something here. Breathing heavily, Nara stands up and wipes her bloody hands on her clothes. Well, what are you waiting for, you scum? Come on, finish me off. Kill me like you killed, St killed Staunton. Be glad you've defeated the villains. So make sure you don't wander wonder whose fault it was that he and I were on the demon's side. Thoughts like that can make you lose your appetite. I will not kill you here. You'll be locked up. I don't think about what to do with you. Sosio sighs with relief. No, I should have should have attacked her. I'm a paladin. I smite evil. A socio sighs with relief. I was afraid you were going to order us to finish her off. I still think of Nura as my friend. I believe there's still some hope for her. But it's important not to let her go back to the demons who poisoned her soul. I think someone who's so angry and exhausted is too cruel. Do whatever you want. You can't escape the demons. Your head will be on Baphomet's altar. Tomorrow, if not today. We do it my way. 
Oh, we get a couple unique items from uh, Staunton here. So we get a Cloak of Resistance plus one, Headband of Inspired Wisdom. A Belt of Physical Form. Grants a plus two enhancement bonus to Dexterity and Constitution. We got Carapace. Whenever an enemy lands a melee hit on the wear of this plus two mithril full plate mail, the attacker has to pass a reflex saving throw DC 18 or suffer 1d3 damage to strength. If the attacker passes the saving throw, they suffer 1d3 piercing damage instead. We'll give that to Sila. Some pretty cool looking armor. Doesn't really match the shield, but that's okay. And Soul Shear. Soul Basher. Stottenvane's Warhammer is once a weapon of honor and repute among the Crusaders. When the Keeper of the Sword of Valor rejected his duty as a paladin and became a double agent, he single-handedly forged the Warhammer into the Glaive Soul Shear, a weapon admired by the worshippers of Baphomet. Mistress Monaga herself tempered the new blade with the grimmest and most sinister enchantments, and no crusader would ever dare to reclaim the disgraced weapon. Whenever the wielder of this plus three adamantine glaive kills a target with it, it summons a demon till the end of the fight. Only one demon can be summoned per fight. If the demon is already summoned, Every subsequent kill heals it for 1d8 plus 5 hit points and gives it a stacking plus 1 bonus on attack rolls. Depending on the hit dice of the killed enemy, the summoned demon could be a Babao, a Merolith, or a Baylor. This weapon cannot be wielded by lawful good characters. It's a pretty, pretty good weapon. We're gonna give it to him. Though the fear effect on his current weapon on marching error is pretty solid. It's a DC 17. And a lot of enemies are immune to being frightened anyway, so we'll go with the possible summon instead. The problem is, Socio is not likely to kill an enemy when we have much more powerful companions in the party. But it could happen. Having that extra summon is always useful. Alright, I'm going to call it here. Next time we'll leave the Citadel and proceed into Act 3. But for now, thanks for watching. Hope to see you guys in the next one.